the man, the myth, the legend that is Matt Verderam, stack in the box. How you doing, my friend? You doing good? Doing great. How are you? Dolphins 2-0, and to a light up the world. Um, you know, yeah. life is good right for a week. Life is good right now. For yeah. a week. You know how the NFL is, right? Kansas City loses this week. That's it. It's over. They'll never right. win again. You know, they're not going to get to the Super Bowl, all that. So, yes. you know how it goes in this league. It's uh, it's week to week. So, for this week, we're in good shape. Uh, if, if they get trounced by Buffalo, then we're like, oh, God, it's uh, it really it, it was all a lie to us the first two weeks. It was all a lie. You know, that's that's what's going to end up happening. You know how it is. But hell of a performance by the kid. Hell of a performance. He look, I, I tweeted out my NFL quarterback rankings like I don't know, an hour ago, and he was what I led with. He was awesome. I went back, I watched the game, and I've seen people say, Well, you know, a couple of the throws, guys were open. Well, first of all, yeah, I mean, that's that's football. Guys get open. You gotta hit him, you gotta see him. Uh, he hit him. Uh look, Tyreek Hill gets open a lot. That's why they traded for him. That's the whole point. He got yes. open in Kansas City, too. Like it wasn't all just Contested catches. And by the way, Mahomes also underthrows him. Oh, okay. Well, listen, Everybody times, underthrows. Uh, quite Everybody. honestly, look, what is the most famous play with Tyreek Hill in Kansas City? It's that Wasp play in the, in the Super Bowl in Miami, right? That is right. the most famous play. Tyreek Hill was standing stationary when he caught the ball. <laughs> he was yeah. so open. So right. look, that sometimes when you have a guy that fast, that's going to happen. Like exactly. I thought, I thought there overall you know. he was. He was phenomenal. I mean, six touchdowns, 469 yards. What? Why would you try to discredit that? Like, <laughs> it, I mean, he was he was great. They were great. Now, you want to sit there and say, hey, you'd like to see a little more of the first three quarters of the game from the Dolphins? Fine, fine, sure. But there's four quarters. Like, they they came back. They won the game. Look, the, the most impressive thing to me about that game was a lot of teams, especially young teams that haven't had a ton of success, a lot of teams would have folded the tent. And just said, you know what? We're on the road. We're playing a good team. And I, by the way, I think Baltimore is going to be a a very good playoff team. Like we're a good team uh, on the road here. We're facing, we're not going to win this game. And I give them credit. Like they came back. They didn't stop fighting. They, 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 they eventually took the lead. And even after the Ravens, when it was tied 35, 35, they took the lead on Tucker's field goal Tua drove them right down the field. So, you know, look, all the credit in the world to them. And this, this game against Buffalo to me, if they win the game, I mean, oh all, all bets are off. Okay, yeah. I mean the hype train is going to be off the rails. If they, but to me, even if they lose the game and it's a really good game, I mean, if you're a Dolphins fan, like you're, you're you got to feel good about it. Like I, I think anyway. That's how I would look at it. Yeah, no, uh, Tua and Mike McDaniel passed the test too because yeah, obviously he's Mister Cutesy with all the uh, the jokes and all that, and we love it down here. I mean, it's it's fantastic to cover like a real human being with a personality, but that stuff doesn't fly if you're losing. If you're losing, no, not. right. And and so the test came, you know, because a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, Mike McDaniel's really funny. All right, we'll see when when things are tough. And uh, and so guess what? Things got tough, and, and he passed the test too. So that was – I was happy for both of those guys, obviously, because they they needed this kind – especially to a we all know needed it. Um, By the way, I, I saw an interesting stat. Kansas City's winning. Andy Reid's a monster. We all know that. It's always been that. But the receiving core for Kansas City combined does not have more yards than Tyreek Hill. Oh, I believe it. So, I, they, no, it's an interesting stat. I did not realize that. Somebody posted that yesterday that they're like at 270-something and Tyreek's like at 284-something. Just the receivers, folks. We're right. not talking about the, the running backs and the tight ends because obviously the tight end is a monster in, in its own right. But um, it's it, it shows you the greatness of Andy Reid now. And yeah. This is kind of what you were counting on when Tyreek, you know, left. You said, you know, for those people who say, oh, they're going to struggle. Well, dude, you, you don't know Andy Reid. He will, he will fix things and he will make things right for his quarterback and make things easier for his quarterback, even though it's going to be harder for his quarterback this year because obviously if you lose Tyreek, it's going to be a little difficult. Yeah, you know, look, I'm I'm not surprised. First of all, I mean, Tyreek's leading the league in receiving yardage. Second of all, I mean, Kelsey has almost 200 yards. So, I mean, part of that is they they just throw to him like he's the number one receiver. Yeah. yeah, but I, look, 
the Chiefs are a different team this year. There's no, there's no way around that. Is it better? Or is it worse? We're going to find out as the year goes on. Um, they largely traded Tyree Kell so they could fix their defense. And I think so far, the defense is doing the job. They gave up seven points before garbage time against Arizona. And they held the Chargers to 17 points until the last minute of the game when they were trading time for points. Uh, they also scored a, a, on a pick six in that game. So, I mean, look, they went into the season saying, we will be able to manufacture 27 to 30 points a game with this line, with Kelsey, with Reed, and with Mahomes. Well, so far, they've scored 44 and 27, although it should be noted seven of the game from last week were, were defensive. Defensive. Um, of, you know, defensively, the thought was, we are going to reinvest a lot of the money we would have spent on Tyreek Hill on this defense. Well, so far, that's worked. They've been much better defensively. Uh, truthfully, the most impressive thing with the Chiefs has been their pass rush. That's been the thing that I, most people in Kansas City going into the year felt like, who knows what you're going to get. I mean, they brought in Carlos Dunlap during training camp. They drafted Carl Loftus, but most rookie DNs, it takes a while. He doesn't have a sack yet, but he's been all over the place. Jones has been Jones. Dunlap's played very well. And so they lead the league in pressures, which I don't think anybody in the world thought they were going to do. And that has helped them with this young secondary kind of figure things out. But so far, they're 2-0, and and now they play a Colts team that, look, I think it's going to be very oh, desperate. Yeah. But the Colts oh. have been, you could argue, the biggest disappointment in football so far. Wow. <laughs> Damn, dude. You know, it's funny because Kansas City knows how to find their tight end, but Atlanta can't. And yeah. that's just like, what a shame, dude. What a talent. And and Arthur Smith's a pretty good play designer. So you just wonder about, it's the Mariota thing. I just can't buy. By the way, going back to your Ravens point, where I yep. disagree with you on this one, I think that's an offense that's made for the regular season. I don't think it's made for the playoffs. I don't think the quarterback is made for the playoffs because I'll give you an example. The fourth quarter, it became a playoff game. And then he had to answer the passer. Because the passer is moving the, the the ball up and down the field. And so he ends up settling for a three. And then here comes the passer and gets seven. And Lamar, his offense is so difficult to, to prepare for week in and week out. So it's hard in the regular season. But once you get to the postseason, the elite defenses step up. And so it's kind of like it reminds me a lot of Tennessee. It's just two different types of running games. Ryan is a... A, a a a game manager when everything's on script. Yes. But once you take Henry out of the game and then things start to go off script, Tannehill's done. Can't do it. Lamar's the same thing. Lamar, once you take the run game out and he has to then now really work the pocket and really try to be accurate in tighter windows, it becomes that much harder for him. And this is why he has fallen short every time in the playoffs and and to me that's what happened this week that fourth quarter all of a sudden you're no longer front running you're no longer playing off script anymore things aren't going your way anymore now now you need to be a passer and I think that's the problem I have with Lamar and why I've never really no matter how many stats he puts up I, I just need you to I need to see it when it matters in the postseason and it never right. happens for him well, and that's my that's my we, issue with him we agree on this for sure. Look, the one thing with them is they are very one-dimensional at times offensively. And when you are one-dimensional in the playoffs, if you face a team that can stop that dimension, you got a big problem because there's nowhere to hide. And I think with Baltimore, one thing about them, in the regular season over the years, when they play bad teams, they kill them. They out, oh, yeah. They're just more athletic. They're, they're well coached. They Physical. get out front and they bury teams. And a lot of it, too, was with Wink Martindale, who now is with the Giants, but the defensive coordinator so many years there, he was so aggressive with his blitzing that if they got out in front of you and you didn't have a quarterback who could beat the blitz, you were just done. I mean, they right. would just absolutely unload over. and over. I mean, you watch the Giants now, it's hysterical. They blitz right. every play, it feels like. Right. So that's part of the way that the, the, the Ravens played. Now – The Dolphins have been the 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 – the um, what's it called? The sacrificial lamb for, yeah. for the Ravens many times like that because they would get beat up and then they don't have the quarterback to get right. you back into you the game. Have, and that's see, that's the problem. The other side of it, too, with the Ravens, they want to play very aggressively defensively. Well, when you play great quarterbacks, which you're going to play in the playoffs more often than not, you got big problems. 
And they they have been torched defensively at times in the playoffs by these teams that just say, look, if you want to blitz us, you're dead. And and they, they've been dead more often than not. Yep. I'm with you there, man. It's uh it's crazy stuff. What did uh what did you think of uh of uh the Tampa situation with Bruce Arians Evans getting the suspension? Uh, and I know Lattimore has kind of been a, a jerk. I don't really know exactly what was going on, you know, that instigated everything. But then Bruce Arians, uh, I don't know if he was like the corner guy in a boxing match, you know, uh, screaming to his boxer, a.k.a. <laughs> Mike Evans. Come on, get in there. Get after him. That was bizarre. bizarre. Yeah. I, I was watching that game live. And look, they've had their issues, Evans and Lattimore. Like that's been well documented over the years. I've seen people argue that Evan shouldn't be suspended. And I would argue that, first of all, I'm with you until he shoves a cameraman as he's walking off the field. Like, then right. you get suspended. That's when you get suspended. Okay. Right. But it's that was that was insane. And my my take on this is like Bruce Arians, it's time to get off the field. If you're not the head coach of the team, get off the field. Like, you want to be up in a box, that's fine. That's fine. Whatever. Right. No problem. You have no business being on the sideline and being really involved here. And I have a feeling the NFL behind closed doors is going to tell him that this week. Oh, they like reprimanded you, him. Yeah. You, you, you can't be there. That's not your place anymore. If you want to be yeah. that, then you, should, you, you, you need to be head coach somewhere. So what if he declassified the field? Is he allowed to go there? <laughs> I'm not touching that. Um, I'm not touching that with a hundred foot pole, big o. There's but no you way. Got, but you gotta give me, you gotta give me some credit for mixing oh, it in, right? Oh, I mean, it's great. You know, it's great, okay. especially for you down in Florida. Okay, you guys, you guys are ground zero for all this stuff. I'm not. <laughs> oh, I, I get in enough trouble on Twitter. I say one thing, even tongue in cheek, I, mean, I, I get screamed at for two months. Well, look, I, you know what? The Buccaneers, in all seriousness, right now, I know they're two and zero, oh, and I, and look, I love the defense and all that. Hicks is now out, which is not surprising. Unfortunately, he gets hurt a lot. Hey, are you allowed? Wait a minute. Are you allowed to talk bad about the Bucks and Brady on his day off? I don't know about <laughs> yeah, this, bro. They don't pay me. Wednesday's his day off. I don't know. Isn't that against the law in the NFL to talk bad about the Bucks and Brady on his day off? Yeah, it's. I, I think know. it's. I think it's. Go ahead. Against... You take chances. You go ahead. You're yeah, you're I, you're a risky dude. Go ahead. I mean, I I just like I don't understand what's going on. Like now now G Josh Wells a backup left tackle and Giovanni Bernard are on IR. Hicks is out supposedly for a month. You've got a team that, look, defensively, they've been great. I mean, you give them all the credit in the world. Yeah. Offensively, they can't score a point. I mean, they, they can't do anything in that game. I, I So I went into Sunday, and I was like, I'm going to write my column about the Bucks and the Saints. So I sat there and watched that game. It was so, it was so bad offensively. I'm like, I can't write about this. There's nothing to write about. Like These teams, look, both of them are good defensively. Neither one can score a point. So I ended up actually writing about your Dolphins and how Tyree Kill – is one of one and he changes everything about your team when he's on the team and how it just, it completely, completely took the Dolphins from being a, a fun team offensively at times a waddle, but like limited because of the way they play. It's like now you have, the, yeah, you're both these guys. You know, because we're stop boring. Anymore. We're boring, bro. Oh, Our it was team boring was if, boring if it didn't go to, to waddle. It was boring. Yes. Yeah, it was boring. Um, it was boring. And it was but, short, you know, the, oh, everything, the, everything by the way, what, what happened to all the idiots? Oh, they got the wrong receiver. You see the guy in Cincinnati. He's kicking out. Waddle's catching six-yard passes. You morons, that's the offense. That's not the kid. Now watch him. McDaniel comes, opens been great. things up, gets somebody opposite of him to take some pressure off him. And now you're watching him 170 yards yeah, later. Awesome. You know, it's like people – it's like I, I, you know, like like this past week, dude. I had to deal with people that they didn't, re they didn't. There are people watching this sport that didn't recognize that short quarterbacks have trouble seeing over the line. And Tua was talking about how you know shorter quarterbacks we have trouble seeing over the line. Oops. And people were coming at me like, "Oh, how stupid are the Dolphins drafting a guy that that can't see over the line?" I'm like, "Yo, greasy." Breeze, Montana, right. Tarkenton, a whole bunch of those guys can't see even six two, six three guys. Yeah, have trouble at times seeing over the lines. It's called passing lanes. You know, it's Matt. It's crazy how we have a lot of people that watch something and they really don't know what the hell they're watching. Oh, believe they're me, just cheering I, shit on. You know, I, I get it. I had a guy email me today who's. Supposedly, it was a Chiefs fan who told me that he thinks Mahomes is, is killing them because of the way he plays. I'm like, like what? What world? The guy's sixteen and sixteen. Like, what? I mean, 
I get that all the time. Now, you know what, though? I was I will say, and I was going to say earlier, with the, the Bucks Packers game fascinates me this week because obviously I think they're two of the best teams in the conference. Yeah. I, can the Bucks score? Like, if Evans gets suspended, they uphold the suspension. Can they score in this game? I, I, don't, I mean, the next the Green Bay's week, defense is actually pretty good, too. Good. I know. Like, yeah. you've, got, you've got Green Bay this week for the Bucs, and next week it's Kansas City on Sunday Night Football. I mean, I am fascinated to see the Buccaneers these next couple of games. Now, I'm not saying they can't win. They've got Brady, all that. Brady has not looked good the first two games. Now, we've seen that in New England where he doesn't look good at all, and then all of a sudden it's like he's just a Terminator down the stretch. Well, they, the, the year they won the Super Bowl, they didn't have a good first half. No, they were awful. They barely yeah. were 500. But yeah. this, you know, this is – when you look at them, the one concern I had about the Bucs going – and we even talked about this in the offseason. They're old. They're really old. And when you're old, you get injured. And when you yeah. look at this team, what is the problem right now? They've got a million guys who are injured. They're injured yeah. on the offensive and, and this, line. And this ain't the everywhere. NBA, bro. This no. ain't the NBA where experience does matter. Young teams rarely go deep. And uh, in the NFL, brother, you better have a really nice mix of yep, youth. You there. have to. You got to have both. You got to have a yeah. couple vets. You got to have some younger guys who can play. And with the Bucks right now, I'm just looking at it. It's like, look, I, I love the talent on the roster, but talent doesn't play if it's hurt. I mean, they, they're just, they're hurt. They got guys all like everybody went nuts about Julio Jones in Dallas week one. Everybody. Oh, look at him. He looks unbelievable. And I hate to say this, but my first reaction was, is he going to play seven games this year? Right. And immediately right. he's out week two. You don't know if he's going to play week three. Like, this is the problem with stuff like this. It's like they brought in Akeem Hicks. Akeem Hicks has had a great career. He's a really good player. There's a reason the Bears moved on. He's been hurt the last year. He's never on the field. Now he's right. out. In a, he's out for a month. Like, this is the it's kind of like the baseball team that they collect pitchers who have bad arms, but the guys are really talented. And you get the GM up there in March and spring training who's like, look, as long as he's healthy, we're it's like, yeah, but that's the problem. That's why he's on the damn the, the, the free agency watch. Like he's hurt all the time. Like right. if he was healthy, he'd get 35 million a year from the Dodgers. Like, this is the point. And so I look at the Bucs, it's like it's great you added Akeem Hicks and Julio Jones and all these guys. If they're not on the field, they're useless. And that is the problem the Bucs have right now is they have all these guys who, yeah, they're talented, but they're hurt. And that's what Tampa's facing right now. Are you an Eagles believer? I'm an Eagles believer to the point that, A, I think they're clearly the best team in that division. Um, I that's, think not, that's not saying much. In that it division. is not <laughs> saying much. So I will go further. I think, look, I think they are very, very good. Um, I've been a Hurts guy ever since he was in college. So I, I believe in Jalen Hurts. Um, I think when you get the education he got, Saban, Riley in college, I think that matters as a pro-style offense. Is also, I gained a lot of respect for him in college when he was with Tua at Alabama. And, you know, he had to kind of deal with some situations there where, you know, a lot of kids would have would have just folded. He didn't. Oh, he's um, mentally tough. Mentally tough guy. Very bro. mentally tough. I, I appreciate that, especially in a quarterback. You got to be tough, especially yeah. in that city. You better be because yeah. you're going to face it. Um, but no, you know what? I really... let, me, let me tell you something. You look at how Tua handled the whole Watson mess the, for well right. over a year. That's toughness. And and, and then and then you yes. look at Mayfield, how he lo lost his shit when they just mentioned it that they may be interested in him. They had they weren't even making the trade at that moment or anything right. like it wasn't even close at that moment, and he lost it. You know well, what I mean? So it, it it shows you the mental toughness that a quarterback has to have when you have to deal with all kinds of crap that's flying around, and yet you've got to overcome. You're overcoming a hip. You don't have great coaches. Right. And then you've got your owner scheming behind you trying to get Brady, and your head coach hates you and wants Watson. I mean, the, the shit that Tua's been through, it, it, it already proves to you that he is mentally and physically – He's there's no doubt in my mind he's the toughest some bitch out there because I would have trouble just going to work after I had hip surgery. This yeah. guy wants to play in the NFL, dude. You know, I mean, that's... I, I don't think his toughness isn't quite it shouldn't be. It shouldn't. Um, yeah. but to, to answer the thing with Philly, I look my question with Philadelphia is gonna be this when they're in the playoffs, and they'll be in the playoffs. Like we just talked about him, in fact, a few of them. Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Matthew Stafford. Like, can you go toe to toe with those guys in playoff games and win those games? Because that, as we just talked about with Lamar, that's a whole nother animal. 
You get into those games. And these teams, like, look, I'm not a big believer, and, like, fans always ask, like, do you think they held something back in this game? Look, teams are trying to win football games, okay? Teams don't, like, teams aren't like, you know what, let's, let's risk losing this week. So, yeah. But I do believe one thing. When you get in the playoffs, you're not worried about showing something. Like, you're just like, look, we got to win. Like, whatever it takes. And if right. you've got, like, if you've got five or six plays in the playbook that you've kind of been sitting on for a special month, you're, you're throwing them all out there. And so that's why in a game in the playoffs, if they play Tampa or the Rams or the Packers, like can can the, can the Eagles go punch for punch with those teams when those coaches and those quarterbacks are like, look, you're getting all of it, and it hurts. You're getting the six best blitzes we've got, and we're getting you're getting the one coverage we think we can beat you with. I will say though, I'm very impressed. Their roster is very deep. It's very good in the secondary. I love their offensive line. I, AJ Brown is going to pay off in spades. So, oh, by the way, how's Tennessee doing without him? Uh, he's a great player. How how did he's a freak, he and bro. Hollywood? How did how did AJ Brown and Hollywood Brown go for the same amount of draft capital? Can anyone explain that? Yeah, no, yeah, it's crazy, it's insane. Yeah. Like yeah. AJ Brown's unbelievable. Like Hollywood Brown's fine, but I mean, my God, he's not AJ Brown. No, no, he, no, no, no. He changes that whole offense because you know what? Third and nine, throw it to him. Throw it up high, box him out, whatever. Give him the ball. He's never he's never uncovered. That's right. Right. That's just it, like throw you're, it you're, to him. Throw it to him. Covered, go. Doesn't matter. You gotta yep. throw it to him. That guy doesn't matter. Where he gets separation, he's got two guys on him. Throw it up in the air. It's he's like Devontae so Adams. Strong and physical, throw it bro. To him. Yeah, you're just you're just not gonna end up, you know, overcoming any of that stuff, man. All right, tell them about stacking the box, my brother. What what do you got going on? Let's do it every Tuesday and every uh, Sunday at noon Eastern, eleven Central. Takes you right in the kickoff on Sundays. Go over all the games, um, and then look. We had actually we actually had Stefan Diggs on this past uh, Tuesday. He came on yesterday, interviewed with us. He was great. Uh, he talked about the Bills Dolphins game. Has a lot of respect for Miami, uh, so that was fun. Uh, so check that out. And then, yeah, I got look on fan side. I've got quarterback rankings went out today, highlighting Tua. We got the picks on Thursday. Just finished writing that column up. So there's uh, there's plenty. And then, of course, you can check me out on Twitter at uh, the handle you see on the screen. And every week, right here, we step into the redrecover.com huddle with Mr. Matt Verderam and follow him on Twitter. Matt, much love, my brother. Have a fantastic week. We will uh, talk next week, my friend. Appreciate Sounds you. Sounds good. Take care. You got it. There you go. The great Matt Verneram, baby, from Fan Sided, stacking the box. Make sure you subscribe to his podcast. He does excellent work as always. Todd Beard's, uh, oh, that is, we just step out of the huddle. Let's do it. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.